I'm going to present you today an interesting case study I've created based on the experience I had in terms of analyzing digital oriented, um, you know, e-commerce or retail businesses. And have you ever wondered why only a handful of companies across the globe, whichever country you take and whichever segment you take, there are only one or two, uh, you know, leaders or businesses that is existing in e-commerce that has been successful, while a millions of uh, millions of other businesses in e-commerce have shut down. They end up either burning out the cash completely or getting acquired by somebody else. But there are only, there is only one Amazon, one Alibaba, one Shopify, and you know one Mercado Libre. There are only very few handful of companies that's been successful. And uh, if you ever wondered, so here is a case study that you know that will help you understand why that case is so. And there will be a good key takeaway or, or a mental model that investors can use in your future analysis. Uh, especially with with emphasis on e-commerce and the digital uh, retail businesses. Let's get into the analysis and see. So here's a presentation. Before we proceed, there is a standard disclaimer that uh, you know the companies or stocks that's discussed in the website. That is sandcompounding.com. That's my website. Or in my videos are just for you know, analysis and information purpose for investors. This is by no means a recommendation. Let's get into the first slide, which is. Uh, to understand this case study, it's important to know this basic formula, which is gross profit, gross margins. Uh, what are gross margins? Um, gross profits divided over net revenues or sales. Gross profits are easy to understand. It's nothing but total sales minus the cost of sales. In general, the cost of sale say for retail stores. So because this case study is pertaining to retail, you know, it includes the actual product cost that you're selling cost of transportation to the company's distribution facilities to the stores from suppliers place the wages um, relating to the staff and labor and uh, any of the other variable components that might be involved now for e-commerce stores it'll also have a couple of components uh, which are different that's including the logistic cost including the shipping cost and also the payment fees because 95 percentage of transactions done on the e-commerce site are digital in nature and uh, there is an interchange fee relating to the associations uh, you know like visa mastercard and um, uh, let's uh, here are uh, four, three four companies or businesses that ha i have analyzed uh, you know so walmart's example let's take average gross margins for walmart over the last decade has been around 25 percentage which is decent for target it's been around 29 percentage which is even better but generally you know retail stores are known to have uh, have a reputation of low margin businesses because these are gross margins and uh, when we take the discount retailers like uh, all is bargain outlet and dollar tree for example they have the gross margins around 39 percentage 38 percentage and um, you cannot really compare apple this is not apples to apple comparison with walmart but uh, you know it's more like uh, because they have a different product mix the cost dynamics is different and as the name says it is uh, it's discount uh, retailing and um, but anyway that's something to be kept in mind and now with the digital commerce which is a third type of business uh, which has stri been striding over the maturity curve in the last couple of decades we see a trend of high gross margins with scale in technology uh, led companies like amazon alibaba and shopify now i've purposely taken these three companies and dive deep into it uh, the, for the nature of the business i just wanted the, the the variance in the type of business as well as uh, you know different geographical locations so that's why these three companies have been chosen now the looking at amazon's uh, you know gross margin analysis a plotted last 5 years of gross profit over uh, fiscal year 2015 to 2019 and uh, gross profits uh, and uh, revenues have been plotted and the margins are uh, you know you can see the margins that's been like rising steadily year over year from 33 percentage all the way to 41 percentage so there is a trend line you can see which has been increasing steadily <laughs> Now, people might say like, you know, it can always be attributed to the scale advantages uh, like warehousing, you know, e-commerce, the technology platform is maturing and uh, the, there's only so much development cost that goes into every year. So uh, it is agreeable that, you know, most of the margin may, or much of the margin increase can be attributed to the scale advantage. But at the same time, we need to understand that Amazon could have never, you know, existed just building the scale without something else underlying that has been supporting the whole business uh, to scale in the e-commerce side so the 
that something else which has been underlying and underpinning this whole scale growth was uh, due to their cloud business or AWS business, uh, which is a high margin business and as well as the advertising revenues, which is also quite high margins in that aspect. Now, uh, the reasons, uh, you know, especially from 2010 to the last 10 years, if you see, the gross margins has been steadily increasing. And uh, the cloud AWS business is a very high margin business. And they have been able to build scale even in the cloud business and benefit out of high margins. And they were plowing back that money to build the scale and to enhance the e-commerce platform that they had geographically product wise distribution wise and you know even you know onboarding so many millions of merchants in the last four to i mean five to six years especially they have they have expanded geographically a lot now uh, it's become an international business in the last decade and what helped is uh, you know this technology platform of aws and technology powerhouse that amazon has become in the last decade you can even call you know many people are there is a rising argument that you know amazon is more of a tech company and i have to give a lot of credit to that argument now you can see there is a declining cost curve for Amazon uh, with increasing revenues uh, due to their cloud and advertising business, taking larger pie of their revenue share and gross margin will only increase from here. And if you notice that it's gonna go further up and with their nature of business, unless otherwise they get into new areas of growth uh, where they might require more investments. Now let's get into the next business, which is Shopify. Very interesting business. It became massively big in the last three to four years. And um, let's do the gross margin analysis here. Inherently, it has been a high margin business. Look at this. From 2015 to 2019, the gross margin has been steady. I mean, 55 percentage, sometimes a little bit of fluctuation here and there, like, you know, 53.8, 56.5, 55.6, 54. But it was you know trending around that 55 percentage margins in the last 5 years but there is an interesting aspect and which i have put an alert here as before that we get into that let's understand what goes into the cost of revenue for uh, you know shopify so shopify for those who don't know it's uh, got a technology platform uh, which gives a lot of services and solutions to the merchants who are onboarded into shopify that technology platform now, uh, it enables million, at least 1 million merchants are present today in Shopify platform. It enables the entire million merchants with a host of, uh, you know, solutions for those merchants and a lot of subscription, uh, you know, related, uh, you know, hosting and platform and uh, storefronts and all of that that is given by Shopify. So it becomes easy for any merchant to just onboard and get into the digital side of the business. What all goes into the cost of revenues? It includes the domain registration, uh, themes, credit card with respect to merchant billing, infrastructure and hosting costs. Obviously, they are hosted in cloud, support functions and uh, amortization of capitalized software development cost. Uh, they might have acquisitions and, uh, and uh, capitalization, which has to be done. Um, you know, there is credit card related fees, uh, you know, relating to the merchants billing, especially Shopify payments. They have recently started, but, you know, all the interchange related fees and payments fees. Then, uh, you know, as I said, uh, the POS hardware costs. So they are also supporting some of the physical retail stores, uh, warehouse storage, outbound shipping, logistic cost, uh, you know, packaging, preparation of orders for shipment as part of the Shopify fulfillment network offering, which they have recently developed in the last three, four years. And their fulfillment network is uh, becoming a big part of the business, by the by. Now, uh, the whole logistic solutions that uh, costs are inherent and uh, you know, that include those are the cost of revenues. Now, one interesting aspect here is, you know, the merchant solutions form 60% of revenue with just 38 percentage margins uh, due to the third party cost associated you know with uh, providing payment processing services and uh, you know the subscription solutions form 40 percentage revenues uh, which really has high gross margin super high gross margins i mean the subscription solutions you know this is why i really like these um, businesses that has high uh, that's a, that has high gross margins like you know which are 
inherently the nature of the business is you know pertaining to high margins due to the subscription uh, nature and many saas that is software as services businesses are moving towards that model with subscription solutions and that forms only 40% unfortunately for shopify but still uh, you know it has high gross margin so it gets netted out you know at 55% now the point to be noted here which is an interesting trend that's developing in shopify is they started with high subscription solutions revenue share which were close to 55 60% days and merchant solutions were only 40 45% days in the initial years now that's got trans you know it's got uh, in, interchanged basically the merchant solutions has become 60% of revenue share and subscription businesses has become 40% of uh, you know the revenue share so which means that their high margin business is shrinking in the revenue pie and the low margin business is in increasing and it's an interesting study so the merchant solutions um, you know which are becoming more prominent as part of shopify's business model and uh, it is also good in a way that more and more merchants are attracted to the platform and shopify is able to enable and provide a lot of solutions to merchants including the payments including um, some of the uh, specified uh, logistic solutions they are providing you know all of that is uh, attracting more more uh, merchants to the platform and that's building scale so it's like moving in in line or in uh, you know in symbiotic to amazon's growth if you notice here so uh, merchant solutions is building scale at the same time subscription solutions is you know ensuring that there is a retention of the merchants on their platform so that's how it is now the alert i have put i have already spoken about it you know the merchant solutions as it increases the gross margins of shopify is going to go down now because uh, the merchant solutions are little lower on the margins compared to the subscription solutions now uh, what can uh, shopify do to as a solution to address this i um, mean you know, they can look at negotiating they can come up with some innovative payment processing methods because really merchant solutions uh, you know payment processing is the real uh, drawdown on the margins uh, you know payment processing and interchange fees they could look at negotiating and getting some good terms with the interchange associations or i come up with some innovative payment methodologies which could help increase few even few basis points would help there but just thought of bringing that point but look at what shopify is doing you know they have a very strong technology platform and they are utilizing that platform providing all the technology support on the platform relating to the retail stores in successfully running the merchants and because of which there is a sticky factor for the merchants on the platform now they are leveraging their technology strength giving a host of services and solutions to the businesses associated amazon is doing the same stuff amazon although it's not relating to the retail they are giving they have very tech, strong technology platform like cloud and a suite of products associated with clouds like you know including the dynamo db elastic search and all of that you know associated products along that comes along with a comprehensive cloud platform they are leveraging that you know to attract more and more uh, you know enterprises on the cloud and uh, with that margins they are building the scale on the e-commerce side now these are not pure play e-commerce businesses by no means now let's let get into the next business which is alibaba based in chai based out of china you know alibaba's uh, here is a trend line i have plotted again last 5 years for their margins it has been reducing uh, continuously in the last 5 years and the drop has been significant so you know 68.7 percentage 2015 that's the time around they came ipo and came down all the way to 45 percentage and 46 percentage and look at the trend line you know trending down now uh, cost of revenue for alibaba pretty much in the same line like e-commerce businesses they also have a technology platform they have uh, you know logistic cost cost of inventories you know they have expenses relating to the operations of their mobile platforms and websites that's where the hosting is done by alibaba for all their small and medium and large businesses and merchants the content acquisition cost uh, you know they have a lot of other businesses in terms of uh, you know marketing strategic uh, video platforms and many other and um, you know they also have um, 
the variable cost, salaries, bonuses, benefits, payment processing fees. We saw that is applicable across, uh, you know, it's pay to Alipay, uh, which is again, their subsidiary. So not a big worry and other financial institutions. Now, Alibaba had a strong gross margins uh, profile since it had major part of the revenue was driven by the marketplace, which is again a tech inbound and outbound platform. So Alibaba's high margins around 66, 68 percentage was due to the, it was a marketplace. It was pretty much a technology platform. They were uh, leveraging that platform to bring more and more merchants. It built a massive scale and they got advantage of that scale. Plus uh, it was just a technology platform. They were uh, doing, putting the plowing back the money into the research and development, making the platform better, but they had got the advertising cost right from the beginning. And that's, that's one of the key reasons why they had very high margins and uh, they had a scale advantage pretty much early in the life cycle. And uh, that all led to the high margins. Now, um, on a steady decline uh, in the last five years, primarily driven by the logistic cost for uh, LA.me, which is their acquisition in uh, Southeast Asia, the fulfillment services provided by uh, Sinia network, which is their logistic network. So they started the fulfillment, uh, self-fulfillment network and services uh, through the acquisition of uh, Sinia. I think initially it was a percentage stake, but they now probably acquired it fully. Then the cost of inventory uh, due to new retail business. Now that is the drawdown on the real drawdown on the margins. So Alibaba ventured into the new the new retail. So so as the new retail phenomenon, they started making this physical retail stores, uh, pretty much self checkout and other things. Um, it is uh, you know it has created a lot of dent in the margins. It has. Uh, sucked a lot of cash as well in the you know plowing back the cash whatever flow cash flows they got and uh, also Lazada which is again their acquisition in I think uh, Southeast Asia so uh, all of these led to the uh, you know drawdown in the margins and in the last five years but having said that once these platforms mature the margins can improve a bit from here now the most important point to be noted all, uh, is that they have made significant investments in cloud data center, uh, you know, which also led to the increase in cost in the initial years. But point to be noted, their cloud business is growing 100 percentage or even now maybe 90, 80 percentage year on year. And uh, Alibaba has already become third or fourth largest, I think fourth largest cloud provider in the world after the AWS, Azure, GCP, and now Alibaba is the fourth. And they are ruling the roast in the whole uh, Middle East, Southeast Asia, Asia, APAC regions, and the cloud business is uh, growing phenomenally well. And at some point, they will break even and they will start seeing their margins increasing due to their cloud business revenue share, you know, increasing as part of the total revenue share. But having said that, so this, this uh, profile is what we need to take a look at. Now, what is the message that we, uh, you know, investors or entrepreneurs needs to take, you know, before starting up a digital e-commerce business or you know any digital business for that matter um, you know we need to look at businesses where we can do the scalability advantage we'll build the scalability advantage we can scale driven by large volumes of customers and transactions and at the same time you know also need to have some part of our business underpinned on the margins by i mean on the underpinned by a strong technology platform which drives the high margins put it very simple you have two segments of your business uh, you know or make it a technology oriented platform even if you want to get into the e-commerce uh, which uh, initially does a lot of marketplace related operations whereby the margins are not impacted Put, plow back the cash and build the scale and uh, you know there could be uh, you know some years of low margins but at some point of time once the scale builds the margins can start a picture can start improving but at the same time if a percentage of revenue share like 30 40 percent of revenue share is driven by some strong foothold on the technology platforms or technology related services or solutions that would really help sustain that you know building that scale you know other side of the e-commerce business 
it's kind of if this kind of model doesn't exist then e-commerce businesses will only be burning out cash perpetually and that will lead to the shutdown someday or getting acquired someday we have seen enough examples walmart's i think jet jet.com uh, was uh, never making money it just kept burning cash for walmart and denting the walmart's margin now uh, we also saw that um, you know in india flipkart and snapchat some of these businesses were growing scale but they were doing that by burning out cash at a very steady state every year and finally walmart went and acquired flipkart uh, now for uh, whatever model they have i think unless it's not a marketplace and not a technology platform that gains benefit from advertising revenues or from the services or solutions provided to the merchants uh, like shopify does it's very difficult to sustain that kind of a cash burn and uh, building the scale so here is a that's a mental model you need to take away to create a self reinforcing business advantage i mean it should be a self reinforcing cycle you see that there is a powerful technology platform with high margin generating high cash flows use that cash flow from high margin business to grow scale into the you know plowing it into the e-commerce business or any other uh, businesses that can build scale and gain network effect and to bring more volumes of customers or merchants into the platform again that scale helps to you know build that uh, you know powerful technology platform giving more services and solutions so it becomes a very strong business advantage and moat uh, that gets developed and so that is the whole point that i wanted to bring up through this case study so if you like this uh, business analysis you can also visit sandcompounding.com where i have a lot of discussions on different businesses i've done analysis video report and articles um, which are all uh, for consumption for common investors do visit there and also subscribe to the channel for more such videos thanks for staying with me